Io tutti i giorni per dimenticarmi andavo in televisione in qualsiasi momento che della giornata accendi la televisione non si parlava intanto che di morti, di covid e di fine di ospedale davanti agli ospedali. Io anche lì mi ho creato la mia isola felice. Io mi ricordo che tutte le mattine venivo giù e quando venivo giù per me il covid non esisteva. Uscito di qua il covid esisteva. La cosa che mi piace di più nell'impastare è l'anarchia che c'è in se stesso. Nel senso comunque è un lavoro dove non ci sono regole, c'è solo conoscenza ed esperienza. Sicuramente questa anarchia ti permette che sia le conoscenze di poter giocare in tante maniere. Devi avere la conoscenza perché ti assicuro che in vita mia mi ho buttate via di, 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 di impasti per trovare, per giocare, per fare. Oggi comunque avendo un'esperienza tentennale nel mio mestiere, se voglio costruire un prodotto so già da, da che base partire. Dopo da lì sicuramente diventa un, una messa a punto, lo voglio un po' più croccante, lo voglio un po' più morbido, però conoscendo l'ABC del, del tuo mestiere. Un piccolo segreto per fare la pizza a casa, quando vi troverete a un certo punto che innanzitutto bisogna usare sempre questa parte della mano, perché con questo facciamo leva con l'impasto e lo andiamo a impastare. Poi successivamente, quando lo vediamo così eh, brutto, da, brutto appena lavorato, basta aspettare qualche minuto oppure magari abbiamo un momento dove la farina fa fatica a, a entrare all'interno dell'impasto. Basta fermarsi un paio di minuti fare un'altra cosa, poi si riprende, vedete che la farina si ammorbidirà da sola e vi dà la possibilità ancora di inglobare alta farina o alta acqua, quindi sicuramente anche per l'impastamento non ci vuole né forza da fare il samurai, e non ci vuole, ci vuole delicatezza e calma, pazienza, qualità, è uguale qualità. Che cos'è un pizzaiolo? Un pizzaiolo è estro fantasia innovazione, voglia di fare, voglia di innovare, voglia di sperimentare. Il pizzaiolo è sinceramente un pittore che dipinge un quadro a mano libera. Ho deciso di fare, mi sono accorto di avere l'indole di fare il pizzaiolo da bambino. Quindi sin da bambino venivo ai locali di famiglia, mi mettevo sotto la cassetta dell'acqua ed ero il peggio incubo del pizzaiolo di turno. Perché comunque io mi piace, venivo attratto da questo assemblamento di ingredienti che acqua, farina, lievito, sale, eh, anche chi è eh, esperto, c'è cioè anche le figure più anziane di casa mia, ha sempre detto Christian da, da grande fare il pizzaiolo, perché comunque era una cosa che eh, veniva proprio dentro di me, io venivo proprio attratto, io mi ricordo ancora oggi che ho 43 anni, comunque ho iniziato a studiare, abbiamo iniziato a portare, a fare un debito madre, quindi abbiamo iniziato a, a introdurre una levitazione naturale perché comunque abbiamo voluto eh, tornare al passato, studiare e dire ma una volta quando non esistevano i cubetti di debito che siamo abituati noi a vedere come si faceva e da lì nasce comunque l'utilizzo del debito madre, comunque che è una cosa antica, il debito madre non è nient'altro che una massa di acqua e farina eh, che tutti i giorni deve essere infescata, dopodiché la sua parte It's now 2 a.m. in the morning and usually that's the time that I'll come to the kitchen and make myself a cup of coffee to put myself off. And I start rolling from that. By the time I finish all the baking and everything, it's around 10-ish. And I'll do some admin work. And by 12, that's the time that I should bring my kids back from school. 
Well, essentially, the cinnamon roll is actually a bread that is fancy up, you know, with cinnamon powder, sugar, butter. It's so unique and people can just look at it and say, that's a cinnamon roll. And the scent, it's got this brilliant, sweet, spicy scent. It makes people happy, actually. It's just like Christmas, right? When you open up a box of cinnamon rolls and you smell it and you go like, this is heaven. I have two different types of rolls. One is the cinnamon and the other one is the non-cinnamon. With the cinnamon rolls, it comes with uh, different toppings like the glazed cheese, peanut butter. Then I have the non-cinnamon roll, cheesy mite, which is either marmite or vegemite. And then I've got the limited edition, the miso kombu roll. Um, it's doing very well. We left a hole, so later is to fill the pineapple jam. This is like the recipe I've had as a child. Like since then, no other pineapple tart <laughs> can beat this one. So the reason I keep the stem uh, so that we can grow our own <laughs> pineapple. <laughs> like hey, you buy cheaper, like one of this is only like three ringgit, right? But you know, there's a different joy when you plant your own. So what you do is uh, just remove the leaves below put water and cover its stem. Uh, as long as you get like two to three inches of roots, you can then transfer to soil. Every time when I cook uh, or when I'm alone at home, I will let a certain YouTube playlist play. During the pandemic, my mom asked for me to record a video for her. Because I told her, hey, you can actually bake using a rice cooker. <laughs> you can bake a cake. And she wanted me to show her how. So while I was doing that recording, I couldn't play YouTube <laughs> as usual. And suddenly I realised that, eh, maybe this is also the time that I could practice mindfulness. Yeah, perhaps I really shouldn't fill my life with sound that are mindless, just at the background. There must be a reason why I always allow that. I realise is to feel loneliness. <laughs> no harm actually trying uh, mindful cooking. It's like orchestrating your personal moment and putting together our thoughts in the process. I think it's very valuable. For myself, throughout the time, uh, I have to learn to embrace loneliness and feelings of missing my family. I think it is totally okay to let that full feelings come. We don't have to try to pretend we are strong and sometimes uh, asking for help, being vulnerable about what we are truly feeling. I think this is truly the time where we can tap on the strength of the community. So I was in Hong Kong for 13 years, working there in regional offices for different companies. I met my husband and we have two kids. When I came back from my maternity leave, my ex-company said that you know, I'm being retrenched. And I go like, oh well, you know what, this is a time to come back to Singapore because I want the kids, my, both my daughters, to actually you know, meet the grandparents. So it was perfect timing, so we decided to come back and was trying to find a job, but it was I didn't have a lot of luck, you know, with that. I have no chance to bake in Hong Kong because I was working full-time. When I came back, the reason why I baked was because my eldest daughter was having a birthday. And she saw the oven, she said, Mama, bake me a cake. And I still remember the only tool that I've got was this measuring set. I have nothing. And I started baking, right? And then my husband said, Oh, can you bake me a cinnamon roll since we can't find a good cinnamon roll in Singapore? That's how I got started. And I wasn't even thinking about, you know, selling it. Oh, the youngest? Mei Mei! Mei Mei! Can you sleep? Don't go home. Don't go home. Don't go home. Okay? Okay?
OK， 不关门，不关门，不关门。Sorry, I remember my first order was eight rolls, and I got to wake up twelve midnight because it's only two pans I've got, and I bake all the way until twelve noon time the next day. And I told my husband, I said, No, this is this is so impossible. And my husband was like, Just go down to Punhua and get your stuff. And I thought, okay, I'm so tired. Maybe not. And I was thinking, no, I still have to fulfill the order next day. I said, okay, okay. So I went down and I queued up for one and a half hour, you know, just to get my three special pans. These are the ones. It was the best hundred dollars spent. I'm telling you, the next day when I try to fulfill order, it cuts down by half of the time. And that was how it all got started. You know, after a lot of thoughts about it, I thought. I actually enjoy it so much. I'll go with it. It wasn't with like you know data like you know the sales or whatsoever. It was just purely you know through the heart. Second chance can happen anywhere, not necessary you know during pandemic. Being resilient during this period of time is very important because if you lost your will to power through, you will not be given this second chance. But you have the power, the willpower to power through. And that's a difference. When I was actually being given the second chance, you know, I grab it. Physically, I was so tired, but my mental willpower is so strong that I could actually go without sleep 24 hours just to bake. It is a chance given to me, and I just didn't want to let go. In questa fase di pandemia, gli italiani hanno anche imparato a fare la pizza. Ormai non penso che non ci sia stato un italiano che non abbia provato l'esperienza di diventare pizzaiolo per un giorno o panettiere per un giorno. Cuocere eh, nel momento in cui si stende la pizza in casa, se si vuole fare una pizza con qualsiasi supporto, quindi parliamo di teglia, la prima fase della pizza va cotta solo col pomodoro e se una pizza mediamente in casa ci vuole 7, 8, 10 minuti a cuocersi, se prendiamo la mozzarella e la mettiamo per 10 minuti all'interno del forno, quella mozzarella ci va a sparire, quindi il segreto è quello di mettere la mozzarella agli ultimi 2-3 minuti, fare una cottura solo col pomodoro, dopodiché andare a mettere la mozzarella a tutti i vari ingredienti che si vogliono aggiungere eh, per fare la propria pizza che si preferisce. Durante il primo lockdown l'area che si respirava era abbastanza complicata. Io e mia famiglia abbiamo fatto una scelta ancora prima che lo Stato ci imponesse. Eh, si è stati chiusi all'incirca un mesetto, eh, però questo mese qua io mi trovavo spesato, comunque ero impaurito il fatto di aver preso il Covid. Eh, ho avuto mia suocera che comunque è stata ricoverata per Covid in quel periodo lì. Io tutti i giorni per dimenticarmi andavo in televisione in qualsiasi momento che della giornata accendi la televisione non si parlava intanto che di morti, di covid e di file di ospedali davanti agli ospedali. Io anche lì mi ho creato la mia isola felice. Io abitando sotto la pizzeria tutte le mattine scendevo giù per non mi curare i miei lieviti e quell'ora che passavo tutte le mattine all'interno del mio locale mi sembrava come se non era successo niente. Quindi venivo giù tutte, tutte le mattine quando mi svegliavo la mia quotidiana era partiva come prima del covid, cioè alzarsi, fare colazione a casa in famiglia, venire al locale, iniziare i lieviti, iniziare la giornata solo che finivo, finivo di fare i lieviti e andavo a casa e questa continuità io mai ho smesso eh, un, per, neanche per un giorno io mi ricordo che tutte le mattine venivo giù e quando venivo giù per me il covid non esisteva uscito di qua il covid esisteva We have been volunteering in the same NGO for many years based on the needs in Ipo it's Uh, related to poverty, especially now during the pandemic when pe many people actually lost their job, they even find it difficult to bring food to the table. So the food distribution program comes in at the right time. At the same time, since we are going out, we take the opportunity to probably drop by the vaccination to encourage the volunteers. Writing some encouragement notes. Wonder. It's not a lot. Uh, I enough for 19 packs. Uh, no, no, we just share uh, only. Ah, can, can, can. I just bought one, 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 one. There is peanut, so those not allergic to moisture. Okay, they share, lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, It's all in small bits, lah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hope you're feeling encouraged. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Oh, so yeah, they don't worry you so much. Okay. Bye. Team boot, team boot. Oh, 
个种。阿伯伯呀，系啊，种下只个。Also to encourage her daughter for getting straight A and also her birthday. Yeah, for sharing lah. Thank you, ah. Nah, ah, kau tu ya. Right. Okay. You do you think you want to talk more a little bit more? I used to do counselling for a living. Now decided to just turn counselling into part time. Uh, and do it for free. Now that everybody is cooped up in the same space together uh, on the counselling end, we have a lot more new inquiry. We are so open to talk about it and share about you missing each other. I mean, it warms my heart. At the same time. When the pandemic hits, we have to put ourselves out there and be ready. But in some way, uh, we weren't. I am usually a happy-go-lucky person. But I had harbored so many emotions within that uh, eventually it broke down uh, and cried. So even as someone who get ourselves trained for the situation, uh, my emotion is still, I cannot hide it. Okay, Papa, you have to go to the house and tell me about the house. Mommy, good morning. I love you. Tell Papa about the house. Starting this business is very liberating in terms of my own time management. I'm not saying that I've got a lot of time on hand. Bye-bye. Have fun. But what I'm trying to say is that I have the authority, you know, to say to myself that today I'm not going to work. Today I'm going to spend time with my family. As a mom of two girls, my objective is to groom the girls to useful people, you know, in the society. I don't need to be super rich. I just need enough you know for my family um, and to be able to make a decent you know earnings out of it it's eight o'clock ish and i'm actually frosting the cinnamon rolls and putting them into boxes this is actually cream cheese frosting it's very interesting you can pinpoint on the profile of your customer just by looking at you know the the choice of flavor that they order so if it's cream cheese, they are probably not Chinese. The Chinese will go for the non-dairy products. Then you've got the peanut butter. Then likely that person is health conscious, gym goers. And then you've got somebody who is just glazed. The person wants to enjoy cinnamon and nothing else. During this pandemic, you find that a lot of people are missing their friends, their family. You know, being able to be present on behalf of them by baking something delicious for them is very fulfilling. It gives me the motivation to keep waking up at 2 o'clock in the morning to bake. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Drive safe. You know, it's so cliche, everybody says, Oh, you know, the kids actually grow up too fast, you know, you need to spend time with them. And it's true. I moved here to Singapore two years ago, and my youngest one is still a baby then. And now she's like a walking toddler. Had I actually worked in a corporate life, I would not be able to see all the milestones that she hit. Maggie! Maggie! Now I'm there, you know, in person, seeing and witnessing and telling her, you know, things that she did well, things that she can improve on, you know, and she said I can give her a cuddle, and that's so precious. My relationship with my mom is rather distant. Uh, I do not grow up with my mom. I grew up actually 
having a lot of ceremonies in life that she's missed. My graduation, uh, my wedding, but I have always wanted her recognition. Uh, I'm originally from KL. It's your typical kampong boy, Mary city girl story. We've moved to Ipoh and then I think it caught my mom's attention. I started to feel some of her concern, uh, which I never really had before. So actually, I am rather grateful for the distance, be it moving to Ipoh or be it the pandemic. It makes us miss each other more, but not shy to express our affection. Yeah, I think we, we used to hold back so much. This is exactly the Japanese cheesecake recipe that I sent to my mom. So probably she translate this video <laughs> as my love for her. La pizza è bella perché la pizza è di tutti, che sono questo mia parte. Però non mi è mai capitato in vita mia di incontrare una persona che mi dice no, ma io la pizza non la mangio. Quindi la pizza è gioia, è felicità, è convivialità, è sapore, è tradizione, è ricerca delle materie prime. Sicuramente post pandemia c'è stata una cosa che il mondo è, molto, è vicino, perché comunque noi pensavamo che la pandemia fosse l'altra parte del mondo e noi non ci avrebbe mai preso, invece non ha dato scampo a nessuno. Sicuramente il mondo si è avvicinato, le culture si sono intrecciate, comunque anche in Italia ci sono molte culture di mangiare differente, dove comunque l'italiano si apre bene o male a tutte le varie culture. Io mi auguro e spero che eh, questo lockdown abbia insegnato a tanta gente l'umanità. Comunque io mi auguro e spero che ci sia un momento veramente di meno cattiveria, di più, nel senso comunque io parlo in generale, quindi mi spero e mi auguro, come tutte le buone fave, eh, dopo un momento brutto che ci sia un momento bello dove la gente veramente diventi più umana e soprattutto impari a rispettare il lavoro di altrui, ma in tutti i campi. Thank you.